everything is really up in the air at the moment. Our focus was to just get in, get the animals, make sure they were okay. We've done that, but over the next coming weeks, we're gonna to have to sit down and have some um, tough conversations about where we go from here. Our building, there's no insurance to cover any of that. We had it back in 2016. Nowhere was offering it. The creek had started to rise, nothing out of the ordinary. Pipes will come up and that sort of thing. About three o'clock, it was okay, a little bit higher. The Leven River hadn't actually started to flood yet. And what happened is, when we had all the storms a little while ago, we'd cleared the creek out, but it was the tree further up that had fallen over. They got to where our bridge was, the water had been flowing under there fine, but a massive stump got caught up, twisted the bridge over to its side. Hard for, for Jenna and the, and the Wing family, um, just because they couldn't do anything. Wait for my phone calls and updates um, from from the other side of the river. So, fair few sleepless nights, and now we're just getting in and, and getting it cleaned up, and hope you know up and running again. But our main priority is just getting these guys comfortable. You can see behind me um, probably a lot of the flood. We're still unable to access the wildlife park, but we've got staff on site there that are um, checking in with us every hour just to keep us updated. Our thing is we said, you know, prepare yourself. We, they may be lost. We've just got to get to those animals and see where they are. And even Dad, Dad's a tough guy farmer, you know, everyone knows him, says he's grumpy and whatever, but the marmosets was his number one thing. He had, we've got babies in there, and he said, we've just got to get food in their tummy and we've got to get them warm. To see him be caught up in that, um, yeah, it, does, it is tough. We've had an overwhelming response of people wanting to come and help. Staff that are volunteering their time, guys with excavators that have come in. I think there's about seven or eight builders coming down from Launceston that have offered their guys, put a hold to their work and to come down and help us just to try and help us get back on track and make the process a little bit easier. So the wildlife park's been here for 36 years. So this is my backyard. This is pretty much where I grew up and spent all my weekends. You know, and it's taken us that long to build it up to what it is today. Everything that you see around us, that's come out of Colin and Megan or mum and dad's pockets, you know, and it's our visitors that come and spend time with us and camp and come for day visits that, you know, help this park run. It's really probably a people's park. You know, social media, some of it, what people have been saying has been absolutely amazing, but you know, it's, it's pretty upsetting some of the comments that are being made about what we were not doing for the animals. And it, it's not true where we were trying, I was trying to do and my team was trying to do as much as we could for our animals. And yeah, some of it's a little bit upsetting, so we just turned it off. So as soon as it was, we could get access, we, we've just got in and, and done what we can. And everyone's okay though, so people and our animals are all okay, so that's the main thing. You know, we thought we had everything in place, but there's always something new or around the corner and we've got to have these conversations about what we do. And at the moment, people have sort of said, you know, yeah, you'll get there, you'll get open back up, but it's just not as easy as cleaning something out. It's it's a lot more than that. And yeah, we, we just really don't know. 